Good morning. Day 209. Picking down the refrigerator, freezer, and pantry meals. So I think I'm going to have to take a trek to Walmart today to take back some um, canning jars that they delivered yesterday. I had ordered wide mouth quart and they sent me regular mouth pint. So that won't work for me for the project I have in mind. I want to use that on my shelves here in the kitchen to store beans and rice and things like that. So those need to go back because they're too small and it doesn't work for what I need it for. So yesterday it rained all day and I think we're supposed to get a little more rain today but the temperatures are going up again into the upper 80s and lower 90s. So, but last week, or this, yeah, last week was actually a beautiful week. My garden is doing super because of the rain. And I really need to get out there and set up those city picker, or patio picker, or whatever you want to call them, boxes. Because I'd like to plant some more beans and maybe some cucumbers. But we'll see. Everything is doing well. I might be getting some baby cucumbers. I like the Bait Alpha or Armenian cucumbers because they're not real big and they pollinate easily. I planted them last year and they did super well. So that's going to be my day. I really don't want to make a trek to Walmart, but... Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, so I'll be going there later today or tomorrow. I'm not sure. But I don't want to go too late because it's going to get hot, and I'll probably just do some things in the house today. So I have lots and lots of leftovers and things I've made ahead, so I don't need to cook which is nice. It's nice to have a break from cooking every now and then. So, but I will show you what I eat. And my stomach hasn't been up to par the last couple days. I don't know what's going on there. So I haven't been real hungry. But that happens. We all have our cycles that we go through. So I'm not sure exactly what I'll finish up today. So anyway, I'll be back in a little bit. And we'll see what's for breakfast, day 209. Okay, let's see what's for breakfast, day 209. Oh my gosh, look at my refrigerator. My grandson went shopping for my daughter. He works at a grocery store. And now I have all this stuff in my refrigerator. Oh boy. All right. I just need to concentrate on what I have available. So I still have a teeny tiny bit of potato salad. I still have, I made some chicken salad. I still have peas I could make a pea soup out of. I have cucumber. I think I'll have that. A little bit of cucumber and I still have a teeny tiny bit of a tuna not tuna salad that I made so I'll eat that up and let's see I have rye bread but I'm not going to have that now I have this little tiny bit of guacamole that I want to eat up and yesterday I didn't eat my yogurt, so I'm going to eat that up. So I'm just going to eat leftovers today. <clears throat> I still have some pot pie and all kinds of things. All right, I will meet you at the stove and I have to go 
take some of this stuff to my daughters. All right, see you at the stove. Okay, good afternoon. I'm going to have my brunch. It's one o'clock, getting a little hungry. <clears throat> so I have a couple pieces of the Walmart bread that they sent with my um, canning jar order. I decided to get some of that. And I'm going to use the rest of this avocado mash and just put that on the bread because I do want to use that up. And it's just more veggies. Did you know the fat in, if you like tomato and avocado sandwiches, the fat in the avocado amplifies the lycopenes in the tomato. So it makes those lycopenes more effective. Just a little tidbit of information. Okay. And then I just have a teeny tiny bit of my not tuna salad, so not much. I want to eat it up because it was tasty. All right. Another thing gone out of the fridge. I always feel good when I use things up. It always makes me happy. And this is just enough for a small sandwich because I have like a little tiny handful of potato salad that I'm finishing up. And this is from the potato salad, so I'm just going to make a little bit, a little bit of a salad here. And this bread is really fresh, just how I like it. Okay, so I'm going to just chop up this cucumber, and I'm going to get rid of the seeds because sometimes they're hard to digest. And like I said, my stomach's been acting up lately, but I'm just going to cut that up a little bit. Somebody wants some cucumber. All right, you guys want some? I like to share veggies with my dogs. It makes them happy too. And it's good for them. And this little teeny tiny bit of romaine that I'm going to cut up too. And I'm just going to make a little teeny tiny salad. So everything this morning that I'm eating is kind of small. But leftovers and it's enough to eat. I'm going to put a couple of these pieces of lettuce onto my sandwich. I always like lettuce on sandwiches, and the rest I'm just going to cut up and, and eat with my lunch. Oh, all right. There you go. They love lettuce. Love, love, love it. So that little tiny bit. Actually, I'm going to cut up the rest of this, too, and I'm going to put it on the sandwich chopped up. Okay, that's it. All right. So all I have 
have in here is cucumber and lettuce. I'm going to add some pepper, salt, and I'm just going to mix this up with the mayonnaise that's in here. Because why not, right? Okay, I'm just going to put this lettuce and cucumber concoction on my sandwich. So you can use up little bits of this and little bits of that. Stuff that you don't think is really worth keeping, you can combine and use it up. Alright, so there is my brunch, day 209, and things out of my refrigerator. Alright, just going to cut that in half. So, here is my lunch, my yogurt with strawberries and grapes, and my sandwich with potato salad and a little bit of green salad. Alright, let me give the sandwich a try. Very refreshing. Okay. I'm going to eat this and then I'll be back later. Well, hello there. I'm sitting here. I was reading a couple books. Well, a book. And I thought I'd have a little chat, a little change from reading. So, I wrote down some thoughts on decluttering. I made myself a bunch of notes, too. Um, let's see here. Decluttering and decorating. And I've sort of put this in the light of that you have more style than money. And there's a lot of us in that situation, even in today's uh, crazy economy. A lot of us still want to keep a nice home or change things up on our, in our home a little bit. So I was thinking, how could we do that without paying a lot of money? you know, without having a big, big remodel or spending thousands of dollars. In other words, how can we do it on the cheap? Well, one of the first things is, I guess you have to ask yourself, when you're redoing a room, what is the feeling you want in that room? Do you want the room to feel energetic? Do you want the room to feel romantic? Do you want the room to feel fun or serene? So I think that's important that when you're redecorating a room to keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, as you're Picking out your decor, and hopefully it's from the, the decor you already have, um, look around your house, and whatever decor brings up that feeling that you want in the room, 
well, you might want to consider putting that piece of decor in your room. So as far as the decor you already have in the, in the room, do sort of the opposite and anything that doesn't give you the feeling that you want for that room, remove it. So you want to remove enough that the room is going to be easy to clean and easy to keep clean. The same thing holds true for different areas of your house that annoy you. Whether it's in that room or maybe it's in a hallway or in a basement or in a completely different room and you want to go around and start decluttering, um, if something doesn't go with the feeling that you want to portray in that room, then box it up. Uh, you may want to do a room, another room, with that type of decor. You may want to do your bedroom serene and your living room a fun party place or a gathering place. So um, just move your accessories and decor from room to room. And if it doesn't fit any of the feeling that you want in your house, then, then it's... Uh, probably time to stick that in the donation box. Now as you're doing your room you probably want to make a list of what what you want to portray in that room and how you're going to get to that point. So I would recommend you start with the easiest tasks maybe it's your mantle or you know, um, whatever in the room, whatever's the easiest to do, start there and then work your way up to harder things. Let's say you want to go thrifting and buy a new bookshelf, you know, that would be a harder thing to do. And then maybe you want to um, refinish that bookshelf. So, you know, that's going to be a little further down your list in order to get from starting the room to finishing the room. So if you can help it, don't buy more stuff. Until you get caught up to the clutter, uh, you don't want to continue to keep adding and piling onto your clutter pile. So until you get to the point where you're caught up with the clutter and you've made decisions on what to give, get rid of, what to keep, what room is going to go, or what items are going to go in what room. Don't buy any more stuff. You can later on if you just don't have what it is you need to get that room to feel that way, then you can start looking around maybe in a thrift store, maybe in a store like uh, Big Lots or even Walmart and maybe you can find some decor there that'll get you to, to the point where you want to be. Now for inspiration, um, you might want to look on Pinterest or uh, a catalog or magazines and find similar items to what you already have and then take a look and see how they, um, how they stage it how they combine it with other things and then you could do something similar to that um, you know maybe use some silk flowers or go for a walk and gather some wild flowers um, all these things won't cost you very much if you want to change the paint color in your room they you, they always have a uh, paints that are maybe similar to the color that you want that were mistakes that you can pick up for cheap. So you can take a look at that like at Home Depot or even Walmart sometimes they they have uh, like open cans where people wanted a certain color and then the color was just wrong. So you might want to use that for cheap paint or if you have a lot of paint hanging around your house, 
you could mix your own if, if, if you know anything at all about color mixing. If not, <clears throat> you can watch a video on that and you can mix a paint up that you might really like. Uh, and then you could either lighten it or darken it depending on what it is, what shade or what mood you want to portray in that room. Now if you're really in a mood to spend money Try buying things that are consumable. You know, if, if uh, buy yourself a coffee and a chocolate bar, or go into Panera, buy yourself a coffee um, and a treat. They have, they have good things there that isn't too awfully expensive. The whole point of it is you don't want to get a poor man's mental attitude. Um, you want to always feel like you have what you need and that you're rich. Not necessarily rich with money, but rich in, in experience and rich in the feeling of being rich. So um, aim towards that and decorate your house that way. Now as far as not buying more stuff, we all have our triggers. I know I do. For me, it's candles and, um, you know, things like that. So try using up your stash. You don't have to deplete it totally, but start using the things that you thought you were really going to like at one point in time. And instead of going out and buying more of the same thing. Or you could allow yourself maybe one candle a month. You know, if you find a scent you like, uh, leave it there at the store and, you know, designate a certain day of the month. And then if you still want that candle, then go back to the store and get that candle. But only get that one candle. The same goes for self-care items or makeup or um, books, anything like that. Allow yourself maybe one day a month where you can say, okay, I really wanted that candle, or I really wanted that book. See first if the library has that book. You can borrow it there. A lot of libraries have online apps where you can borrow books that way, e-books or, or uh, audio books all sorts of things like that if you don't want to physically go into a library although I, I rather enjoy going into the library I, I like the, the peace and the quiet and to me being in a library uh, makes me feel very serene and and all that knowledge um, makes me feel like I want to learn something so I can't emphasize enough how important it is to shop your own stash. Things you have stashed up. Things that maybe you boxed away years ago and forgot about. Take a look at those things and then whatever you really don't like anymore, then declutter it and uh, pass it on to um, a charity and you know give it a new home. But a lot of us have things that we've forgotten we've had. It got shoved to the back of a shelf or a cupboard. And you like that thing at one point. So pull everything out and then see if you still like that thing. And if you don't, our tastes uh, change as, as we go through life. And maybe what you liked in the 70s isn't what you like anymore in, in 2022. So, you know, get rid of the old stuff, because you're not going to use it. Here's something that I've been working on for 209 days now, and that's shopping my refrigerator. Same goes with the freezer. Go through your freezer and your refrigerator, and pull out all the things. Sometimes we buy things. I know I've done this. We buy things that sound good to us. We try it. We don't like it, but we spent money on it. 
So we stick it in the fridge and, you know, once in a while it, it comes to the front and, and you just really don't like it. You know, those, those things either offer it to somebody else if it's not too old or throw it away and, and just, you know, it happens. Sometimes that happens. And then try to only buy those things that you know you really like and that you know you'll really use. And stay away from uh, fad foods, things like that. Just try sticking to the basics. Same with the freezer. You know, go through your freezer. Sometimes I'll have a leftover that I decide I'm going to freeze. And it was like, eh, that meal was at best mediocre. But it's like I really should eat it. Well, go through your freezer now and then, and if you really don't want to eat that meal, then throw it away. You know, there's no point to keeping it in the freezer um, any longer than you need to. Now, if you're into higher-end things and you see things that are too expensive and you know you can't afford them, um, try and find dupes. You know, something similar that you might like, that maybe you can afford, and it'll satisfy your desire for that expensive thing that you know you really don't have the money to have. And just tell yourself, I'm choosing not to spend that much money on this thing. Don't tell yourself, I can't afford it, I can't this, because then you're going to get into that poor man's mind frame, and you're going to feel sorry for yourself, and then you're going to go, well, I'm going to buy it anyway, because just because I want it. So try and find dupes around, you know, a certain style. If you like a certain artwork uh, from a certain artist, and you can't afford that artist's uh, work. What I used to do, I always liked Thomas Kincaid's art. Well, there's no way that I could afford any of his artwork, even prints. So I used to buy his calendars and I would frame them. I'd, I'd put a matting around them and frame them. And then I would make um, a gallery of the different uh, pictures that I liked. And that always worked real well for me. You can do the same thing if you like a certain uh, designer style. Find something very similar and design around that. And that usually works really well. The same thing about your clothing. Um, if you see uh, an outfit that you like, let's say in a magazine, well, keep your eye open for maybe it's a skirt and, and a, um, a jacket, maybe with a, with a t-shirt under it or whatever. And when you're looking around and, and shopping for clothes, whether it's in a thrift store or Walmart or wherever it is you like to shop and what you can afford, look for similar lines and similar... Uh, pieces of clothing that you can put together that give you the same style as the, the expensive outfit or dress or whatever it is you want to create. So I think it's important that you figure out what your style is, whether it's in your home or on your personal self. Um, you don't have to look like a pauper because you don't have a lot of money. You can you can put things together and if if you don't know what to do, uh you can always enlist the the help of a friend that has a good sense of style or a family member that has a good sense of style and ask them to help you pick out some things. And uh, that should work real well for you, too. So start living like you're rich, even if you're not. I made a whole video on that way back when. Um, you don't have to live 
like you're poor, even if you don't have a lot of money. You know, you can make yourself feel... Really, living like you're rich, to me, is making myself feel special. So whether that's having a latte in the morning instead of just coffee or tea or making uh, maybe a chai latte, putting some whipped cream on top, maybe some sprinkling it with some cinnamon. Go the extra mile to make yourself feel rich. And like I said, I'm not talking about money rich. I'm talking about the feeling of being rich and having abundance. And most of us, even if we have a very meager home and, you know, most of us, compared to a lot of the world, we truly are rich. So, but you can spend time in nature, you know, uh, that can make you feel rich. Like I said, having a special drink. You don't have to have a, a $30 bottle of wine. You know, find a wine, if you're a wine drinker, find a wine you like that's maybe... 10 or $12. You know, try different ones. Um, go to a wine tasting. They, they, a lot of them will have samples for very cheap, and you can try that, and if their wines are a reasonable price, you can buy yourself a bottle or two of wine. So that's a way you can make yourself feel rich. Make leisure time a priority. There's nothing that can make you feel rich more than having leisure time. You know, not always nose to the grindstone. I know I know people that, well, if, if I'm not making money or I'm not being productive, you know, then um, it's a waste of time and, you know, slow down. Slow down not everything's a hurry. Not everything has to be um, speed cleaning or, or a power workout or, you know, I mean, our society breeds neurosis in my, in my opinion. You know, we all think that that's not my nature, but there's something wrong with me because I don't do that. But that's not true. I don't think humans are really meant to live that way. It causes too much stress and, and the, you know, you get that cortisol going and then we all get too fat and, you know, that, that's not healthy. So slow down your lifestyle. Be present in the moment. Um, and, and don't buy into the hype from all the advertisers on TV. They, they just want to make money, and that's how they do it. You know, you have to have the most expensive car. You have to have expensive clothes. You know, if, if, if that isn't your goal, uh, if a McMansion isn't your goal, it, it's like, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with you. I, it's human nature to not live that way. But we've been conditioned with our society and it's just gotten worse and worse with, you know, the internet and the television and people didn't live that way before all this electronic stuff came into play. So you might want to think about unplugging sometimes or if you want to watch something or, you know, listen to, to music, soothing music, or uh, watch happy videos, um, maybe some animal videos, <laughs> there's a, a YouTuber that has a channel, channel called uh, Animals House, and it has a little monkey called BB. And it's so cute, you know. I mean, you can't help but smile when you watch those videos. She gets into all kinds of mischief. He dresses her up, and, you know, there's other animals. There's dogs and ducks, and it, it's just really cute. So watch those kind of videos. Don't always watch 
the news and, and the political things going on. And yeah, you have to be aware of some of those things, but you don't have to have a steady diet of it. Declutter anything that makes you feel poor. You know, if it's broken or it's ugly or it doesn't fit your style or whatever it is. If it makes you feel poor, get rid of it because we don't need that mindset. If things are old, broken, or worn out, get rid of it. Use your better dishes. You know, wear your nicer clothes. Get rid of the, the things that um, are really disheveled. You can keep a, a few of those things to work in the yard, and, you know, or to clean in. But for the most part, <clears throat> wear your nicer clothes. You know, it doesn't have to be a ball gown or, you know, you don't have to be dressed to the nines every day. But if you have a pair of shorts that are, you know, torn and, and uh, washed out and you have a nice pair, get rid of the torn and washed out ones and wear the nice ones. So um, <clears throat> that way, if somebody comes to your door um, unexpectedly or you have to run out to the store or whatever it is you have to do, you're not going to be embarrassed. Become an interesting person. Um, learn about things that you can talk about, whether it's maybe space exploration, if that interests you, or art, or if you like to watch movies and you like to talk about things like that. Um, join a group. Uh, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. A lot of that stuff is, is free. Um, find a walking group. You can talk about the things you, you see. Learn about um, plants and animals or, or bees or whatever it is that speaks to you. But become an interesting person so that um, you're not so bored. So, you know, if, if you're watching a movie and, you know, you say, oh, that would make me feel really rich, maybe you could find a free or a frugal version of something similar that would give you the same satisfaction as if you spent thousands of dollars, you know, if, if you want to go on a trip but you can't afford to go to the Bahamas. You know, if you have a lake around you that uh, you might want to go to and visit that, you could, you could do it on the cheap with camping or, you know, anything like that. But you would get the same feeling, um, except, of course, it wouldn't be a trip to the Bahamas, but you know what I mean. It would be a similar experience. And you can go with a group or go with your friends or your family, and you don't have to spend a lot of money doing that. Well, okay, those are just some of my thoughts that I came up with. and. Um, Make a journal, maybe, of things that you would like to do or that would make you feel rich or things that you enjoy. Um, and then find cheaper ways to do them so that you don't feel deprived and, and you really can feel rich. All right, that's it for my chit-chat. Um, I'm going to see what's uh, for dinner, day 209, and I know it's going to be a leftover. I'll probably eat my pot pie, my half a pot pie. All right, I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll look in the refrigerator, or maybe I'll just get the pot pie out. All right, okay, I'll see you so in a little bit. So I always bit. try and eat my dinner off of a pretty plate. 
I bought these dishes years ago when I first moved into this house. I've had them for 20 years. Um, they're not broken, they're not chipped, they're in beautiful condition, and uh, I think they're pretty. So, you know, I could eat my pie out of this, but I want to use a pretty plate. So I don't know if I can eat this whole half of a pie. I mean, it's not really that much food, but I do want to finish it up if I can. So this is what my dinner is for today. And it's just leftover pie. And I had it the other day too, and it was delicious. So I'm slowly using up my leftovers. I could have a salad with this, but that would be too much food for me. So this is what I'm having for dinner today. And I do have a couple other leftovers in there, so um, not many. I ate most of them up. So, all right, but that's it. That's all I have for you today. So I want to wish you abundant blessings, my friends. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.